Good day everyone, in this video we're going to talk about quantitative research designs, particularly the types of quasi-experimental research designs. As mentioned earlier, we're going to focus on the different types of experimental research designs. In a previous video, we talked about the true experimental research design. To have a recap, the true experimental research is considered as the most accurate type of experimental research design. Also, it is used to test a hypothesis. Furthermore, the true experimental research design involves random selection of participants as well as having a control group and a test group. It is also worth noting that the true experimental research may or may not have a pre-test or post-test. With regard to types, it can be classified into three types, namely the post-test only control group which involves testing the control group and test group after the intervention has been given. Another type would be the pre-test post-test control group wherein it tests the control group and test group before and after the intervention has been given. And lastly, we have the Solomon 4 group design which is a combination of the first two designs wherein the respondents are divided into four groups. Furthermore, the Solomon 4 group design is conducted to counter possible threats to internal validity and verify results of the given intervention. To learn more about the true experimental research design, you may click here to watch the video. Now at this point, we're going to talk about the quasi-experimental research. The quasi-experimental research aims to determine causal relationships among variables. Also, it bears resemblance to the true experimental research design, however, it's a bit different. It's different because there is no random selection of participants in quasi-experimental research. Also, it involves pre-test and post-test. Furthermore, in quasi-experimental research, control group is optional, meaning it's very much dependent on the design or type of quasi-experimental research conducted. Furthermore, quasi-experimental research is conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of a treatment or intervention. With regard to types, there are four. First would be the non-equivalent comparison groups design, the pre-test, post-test design, interrupted time series design, and combination designs. First, let's have the non-equivalent comparison groups design. The non-equivalent comparison groups design involves testing two groups. Also, it is considered as non-equivalent since the members of the groups involved are not randomly assigned. With this in mind, let's consider this example wherein we have a study that aims to assess the effectiveness of a new method of teaching literature to elementary students. As mentioned earlier, for this particular type of quasi-experimental research, there would be two groups. We have Section A and Section B. After the participants have already been identified, both of them will undergo the new method of teaching literature. This is considered as the intervention in this particular example, after which they will have a post-test wherein the results will be identified. Now before we continue, let's answer this short question. Why is it called non-equivalent? Since the participants involved in the study have not been randomly assigned to groups, there may be internal factors that might influence the results of the study. Let's go back to the example earlier wherein we have Section A and Section B, both of which will undergo the new method of teaching literature. Afterwards, both sections will have the post-test in order to identify the results of each section. Now, since the participants involved have not been assigned randomly to a particular group, we cannot say that Section A is equivalent or similar to Section B. It could actually be considered that Section A and Section B are different in terms of the student's IQ levels, the student's behavior, the teaching strategy used by each teacher in each section, as well as the environment of the classroom itself. Now, all these factors might have a contribution or might affect how each particular section would actually perform. These factors may be considered as internal threats to the validity of the results of the research. As such, these must be addressed properly. With this in mind, let's answer another question. How can we avoid these threats? For this particular example, in order to avoid these threats to the internal validity of the results of the study, 
A researcher may use the following strategies. One is to select participants who are of the same level. Next is to include students who have equal test results. And lastly is to select participants who are taught by teachers using the same teaching strategy. Now take note that while these measures help reduce the risks of having these threats, there are still other factors that may affect the results. The next design is a pre-test post-test design. This particular type of quasi-experimental research tests the dependent variable before the treatment or intervention is given and after the treatment has been given. With this in mind, let's consider this example wherein we have reading intervention program as aid to students with low reading comprehension scores. Say for example, these are our participants. Since this is a pre-test post-test design, this particular group of participants will undergo a pretest in order to identify who would be included in the actual reading intervention program. Once the participants have been identified, they will now undergo the treatment. In this case, it is the reading intervention program. After the reading intervention program has finished, they will now undergo a post-test in order to identify the results, whether they pass or they failed. From this particular results, the researcher can now come up with conclusions and further recommendations. Now at this point, let's answer another question. What is the purpose of conducting pretests? In a quasi-experimental research, conducting a pretest serves the following purposes. First is to identify participants that would be involved in the actual research, and second is to determine a base score or data that can be used as a point of comparison. Now we focus on the interrupted time series design, which is a variant of the pretest post-test design. The interrupted time series design involves a series of testing and measurements at given intervals before and after an intervention has been given. With this in mind, let's consider this example wherein we have a study that aims to identify the effect of shortened school study time on the overall productivity of the students. Since this is an example of an interrupted time series design, a researcher will have multiple observations before the intervention is given, in this case, it is the shortened class hours, and after it has been given. With this example, the researcher would then observe the data that has been collected before the intervention, which is considered as the pretest, and after the intervention, which is considered as the post-test. From this example, the researcher can have the conclusion that having shortened class hours has a positive effect on students' overall productivity levels. Now before we continue, let's answer another question. Why are there multiple instances of testing the variable? In an interrupted time series design, conducting multiple tests before and after the intervention allows a researcher to observe the consistency of the trend. Also, this helps the researcher to verify whether the treatment has been truly effective as reflected by the changes in the testing or measurements made. Lastly, we have the combination design, which combines the elements of both non-equivalent designs and pre-test and post-test designs. It is also worth noting that the combination design involves having a test group and a control group in conducting the research. With this in mind, let's consider this example wherein we have a study that aims to identify the effects of social awareness program on students' attitudes towards social responsibility. As mentioned earlier, we're going to have two groups, which would be in this case, students from school A, which is going to be the test group, and the students from school B, which will be the control group. Now both the test group and control group will undergo a pretest in order to identify their initial attitudes towards social responsibility. However, only the students in school A, which is the test group, will undergo the intervention in this case, it is the social awareness program. After the intervention has been given, both the test group and control group will have the post-test in order to identify if there are changes in the attitudes towards social responsibility. Now before we end, we're going to answer one last question. 
What is the objective of conducting a combination design? A combination design is conducted to help the researcher determine the extent of the improvement between the test group and the control group. This recognizes that both groups involved would exhibit changes or improvements over time. However, it is worth noting that the question to be determined is whether these changes are caused by the intervention or other factors such as history or maturation. In a nutshell, quasi-experimental research is an experimental research type that is seen to bear resemblance to a true experimental research. This means that both true experimental and quasi-experimental research are the same because both aim to determine causal relationships. Also, both involve having the intervention of the researcher as well as manipulation of variables. It is also worth noting that both the true experimental research and quasi-experimental research are conducted in the controlled setting. In terms of differences, true experimental research involves random selection of participants, while in quasi-experimental research, the participants are not randomly selected. Also, in true experimental research, it may be conducted with or without a pretest while quasi-experimental research involves pretest and post-test. And lastly, in true experimental research, it involves having a test group and a control group, while quasi-experimental research, the control group is dependent on the design.